Hey guys, I'm Sebastian Bober from Cinema 5D and after our extensive review and test of the DJI Inspire 2, we will now focus on post-production. In this video, I will show you how to work with DJI Inspire footage, specifically how to convert raw footage shot on a DJI Inspire 2 X5S or Inspire 1 X5R and also how to apply a lot to DJI's D-Log Gamma. So, assumed that you work on a Mac, I'm showing you three different ways to post-process DJI Inspire raw footage. Conversion in DaVinci Resolve, which is the fastest but won't give you the very best quality. Conversion in After Effects, which gives you the best quality but is very slow. And native raw editing in Premiere Pro with a workaround, which is extremely slow but maybe useful. Um, instead of shooting RAW on your Inspire 2 drone, you can of course also skip the conversion altogether and record in the Apple ProRes codec and DJI's D-Log Gamma. In my review we looked at the differences between RAW and ProRes on the Inspire 2 more closely and found that uh, ProRes files look really really good in terms of image quality and dynamic range, but if you want the best possible resolution, you should definitely go for 5.2K RAW. But we will look at D-Log in the last segment of this video. First up is uh, the conversion for Inspire 1 RAW and Inspire 2 RAW in DaVinci Resolve. This solution is great because the app is free to download and um, you can find the download link in the description of this video below. Uh, this method is the fastest way to convert Inspire RAW files to a workable format. The results look really good, uh, but won't give you the very best image quality as I mentioned before. Please note that the DaVinci conversion does not remove lens defects like chromatic aberration, vignetting and distortion. Out of the box uh, it gives you a generic flat gamma and in my experience it blows out the highlights a little bit so it slightly decreases dynamic range for me. But if you want your images really fast, then this is the workflow for you. Okay, so what you do in DaVinci Resolve after you created uh, a new project is you browse to your Inspire RAW shots. Then you navigate to the directory where your RAW files are organized in folders and you drag the shots you want into the media pool. Then you want to change your project settings to the resolution of your shots by clicking on the gear wheel at the bottom right hand corner. In the settings menu under master project settings, change your timeline resolution. I could choose for example Ultra HD or um, Inspire 2's native 5.2K which is 5280 by 2972. Next go to the edit tab and drag your shots to the timeline. In the color tab, select your first shot and then set decode using clip, color space, black magic design, gamma, black magic design, film, and don't forget to tick the highlight recovery box. If you have many clips, you can simply click color and apply grade from one clip prior on your other shots. And it will copy the same settings over to speed things up. At the end, export your files in the delivery tab uh, if you want to batch convert your shots, select individual clips, choose your export codec, for example, Apple ProRes 422HQ. Under audio, untick the export audio box because our drone doesn't record any audio. And under file, select source name as file name. Last but not least, choose your export directory and then click add to render queue button and then click start render. Now what you get is a bunch of clips using the Blackmagic Design Film Gamma Curve. This is a good starting point, but the colors are not 100% accurate and it won't match perfectly uh, with other cameras and lots. I wanted to get clips that would have a similar gamma and colors as the Arri Alexa, so I created a set of uh, conversion profiles and LUTs that helped me get closer to this look. To use them, uh, you first have to install them. Go to your DaVinci Resolve uh, settings menu, then click on the color management tab and open LUT folder. 
The folder with all of DaVinci's LUTs will open in the Finder window and here's where you paste the Cinema5D raw to log.cube files into the LUT folder. When copying has finished, click the Update Lists button in the DaVinci Resolve settings window and now you can use the DJI Inspire raw to log LUTs in DaVinci Resolve. To apply them to your shot, simply go to your Color tab, make sure you have set all your clips gamma space to Blackmagic Design Film and Highlight Recovery as mentioned earlier. Then select all the clips you want to convert, right click and under 3D LUT um, for Inspire 2 RAW files choose Inspire 2 RAW to log. Now export all your clips uh, in the Deliver tab. For me the Inspire RAW to log conversion presets are a great way to play with many of the LUTs that I like to play with. Um, for example here in Premiere um, this shot of the bridge was converted with my preset and for example here I have the Film Convert Pro plugin and um, in the Film Convert plugin I simply choose Ari Alexa Log C and um, here I have many film stocks that I can uh, try and you see all of them look uh, very nice with the footage and uh, my download also comes with one of our own LUTs. Um, this is our Cinema 5D InstaLUT, which has a filmic look, popping blues for error shots, and still retains rather neutral colors and nice skin tones. I personally don't like uh, when a LUT changes the overall color tone of a shot too drastically. So next up is conversion in After Effects uh, and this gives you the best possible quality but it is much slower than the DaVinci Resolve workflow described before. Uh, note that in order to process 30 minutes of 5.2K raw, raw data from the Inspire 2, my Mac Pro ran for a full day whereas uh, in DaVinci Resolve it took about one hour. Um, it's up to you but for me uh, the extra quality is worth it most of the time. With the After Effects conversion, you're using Adobe Camera's Adobe's Camera Raw app, and this can also remove color noise from your footage, removes chromatic aberrations, vignetting, and distortion from your shots by using the embedded lens data embedded in the RAW. So what you do in Adobe After Effects CC is you make a new project, and then you drag and drop your folders containing the RAW Cinema DNG sequences into the After Effects project tab. The Camera Raw app will open and you can now adjust the look for every single shot one by one. You can create your own look and save it to the Presets tab or you can use my Raw to Log conversion presets that roughly match the look of the Arri Alexa for Inspire 1 and Inspire 2 Raw footage. More on that later. And now all you do is drag them to the Render Queue tab at the bottom. And now select your desired target codec under Output module in the Render Queue tab and then select your file destination under Output 2. This will be automatically applied to all shots when all of them are selected. Finally click Render in the Render Queue tab and now wait. If you want to use my Cinema 5D RAW to lock conversion presets or my InstaLook uh, Insta look, look directly in After Effects, you first have to install them. After you have um, Downloaded them, navigate to your library folder in Mac OS X. If it is hidden, you can reveal your library folder by going to your home folder and then selecting view, show few options and ticking the show library folder checkbox. Now go to library, application support, Adobe Camera Raw settings and place all the .xmp files into this directory and then simply restart After Effects. The Cinema 5D RAW to log presets are now installed to your Camera RAW app and you can load them whenever you import a Cinema DNG file to Adobe After Effects. In your Camera RAW app, go to your Presets tab and select the required preset. There are presets for Inspire 1 and Inspire 2. The normal preset is Log 0. If your shot is too dark, you can select Log plus 1. If it is too bright, you can select Log minus 1. Uh, if you have blown highlights, you can either select the Log HS preset up here, which will save your highlights, or alternatively, 
you can use HL which will blow your highlights with a more natural highlight roll off. You can also select the Cinema 5D InstaLot which is a look I created that gives you a cinematic image while at the same time retaining rather neutral colors, nice skin tones and saturating blue skies for nice aerial shots. The same look is also included as a LUT that you can apply later in the workflow uh, and of course you can also change the look inside the Camera Raw app and create your own version of the LUT with your own filmic colors and save it as a new preset. Um, once your files are converted you can use many of the creative LUTs uh, that are out there uh, like Film Convert that I showed you before or you can also use the Cinema 5D InstaLUT and apply it to the footage in Premiere Pro. Okay, so here's the third way to work with Inspire RAW footage, which is um, native RAW editing in Premiere Pro. This method is extremely slow and not recommended, but for the sake of being thorough, I'm showing it to you anyway. So this works by starting in After Effects and importing your clips as shown earlier. You have to create an After Effects timeline for each clip. Uh, when this is done, select File, Save As and Save a Copy as CC. Now go to your Premiere Pro project and import the file you just saved. A window will pop up and uh, will allow you to select all of the timelines you created in After Effects. Each of those timelines represents a clip and you can work with them as though they were individual clips. This is a cool workaround, but it's so slow that it's impossible to edit. But I don't know, maybe uh, this is useful for one of you guys out there. Unfortunately, right now, it is not possible to work with all Cinema DNG files natively in Premiere Pro. It hasn't been possible for the last three years. Let's see um, if that will happen in the future. Probably not. Uh, here's one more tutorial for you, which is applying a lot to D-Log footage. D-Log is DJI's, DJI's own log gamma and you can select it when shooting in the Apple ProRes codec on the DJI Inspire 2. Whenever you're shooting uh, 4K, this is really the most recommended workflow. Simply shoot in D-Log in ProRes 422 HQ or 44444. I think it also works in X, DNX HD. Um, the problem is that uh, what do we do with D-Log? Um, I don't believe there are many LUTs yet for D-Log. Uh, and it's also hard to match D-Log footage to RAW footage uh, to work on a project together. Okay, so what you do is you import those clips in DaVinci Resolve and then with our uh, RAW to log conversion presets, I'm also including a special LUT that lets you batch convert D-Log files to roughly match Alexa Log C files. This is great also to match Inspire uh, RAW footage to Inspire ProRes D-Log footage. In DaVinci Resolve for ProRes footage, you simply select the D-Log to log LUT that I showed you uh, how to install earlier and for raw footage you select the raw to log LUT.cube files that I showed you earlier and that's it. I'm using my Inspire raw to log conversion presets and LUTs because it lets me work with many great third-party LUTs directly on my Inspire raw files. I did a lot of tweaking to get close to the look of the Ari Alexa, so if you apply Alexa Log C LUTs that you can buy from third parties to footage uh, converted with my preset, the footage look, should look really nice. I like my LUTs to look right because if you simply apply any LUT to any gamma, the colors will usually be off, especially skin tone, so this helps me to get started. You can download the presets and LUTs as a single package on our website and you will find the link in the description below. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this workflow tutorial and make sure to follow us to be notified on the next release. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.